You've been doing a deep dive into no-knead bread baking, haven't you? I've been doing this for a while and I thought I just wanted to make a video sharing you what I've learned about baking this bread because um, I'm baking a lot lately. So you want to come with me, learn how to bake bread better? Let's go. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go through making a whole no-knead recipe and the, the kind of tips and tricks will flow out of my head. How's that? I have never seen what tips and tricks flow out of your head before. <laughs> But I've learned stuff while making this and I thought I'd share it with you guys watching. So when you're home, you can make bread. When you're home. <laughs> Henry, is there toast in the house? Henry loves toasted no-knead bread. So whenever <laughs> no-knead bread is around, you know who is around. Make, six, grow, cook. Garden fork. The key thing that I've learned is a scale. Rather than measuring with cups, scale, grams, it makes a huge difference, okay? Attached to my scale in this drawer is a piece of paper with the measurements for the no-knead bread. And I can't find that piece of paper. I cleaned up, I cleaned up the kitchen for the video and now I can't find the important piece of paper. I found it, I had to go online. Um, Grams and a scale. This works really well. Okay, zero this out. And then you want 430 grams of flour. You can use all-purpose flour or bread flour or a mix. I mean, with most of my cooking, I'm like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But with the bread baking, measuring it out with a scale, I never owned a scale before and it was cheap. It made a huge difference. And it makes sense because of, um, hold on. When you dredge um, a cup of flour, I mean, it can have a lot of air in it, it could have some moisture in it, and then when is a cup a cup, you know? But a gram is a gram. So, um, yeah, weighing it, my big first tip. I'm gonna do nine grams of salt. This is a coarse kosher salt. A heaping quarter teaspoon of yeast, okay? So why did I measure the yeast with a teaspoon and not the scale. Because inexpensive scales like this one, it can measure big ingredients like flour and water, but it, you know, if it goes up to 500 grams, it's not gonna be able to disintegrate. Disin it can't measure one gram versus 1.5 grams. And so a quarter teaspoon of yeast is just fine. Active yeast or dry yeast, any of the major brands will work fine. Make sure that it's not dead yeast. Uh, I keep my yeast in the refrigerator or the freezer and that extends the life quite a bit more. Um, if your yeast is dead, this isn't gonna work. Next I want 345 grams of water. This is a great tool, a whisk, for mixing flour. I spin the bowl and I spin the whisk opposite directions and I think it does a really good job of mixing the salt and the yeast into your flour. We're gonna add our water, and so we're gonna go from the whisk to a spatula. This is my kind of go-to tool for a lot of doughs and stuff, so um, dry ingredient dough, wet ingredient dough. I don't know if making a well really helps or not, but I kind of feel like I know what I'm doing then. Who knows? Does any of us really know what we're doing? <laughs> So the dough is getting to what we call shaggy. I love that word. <laughs> it's gonna look dry. It's totally okay, all right? Don't get freaked out by it, don't worry. It's called shaggy, it looks dry. But let me show you what's gonna happen, okay? So this is covered. I like to keep it in the oven because my house is kind of cold and the, well, a lot of times it's cold. But the key thing here, here's our tip, oven light is on. And then that helps this keep warm. A warmer temperature leads to a faster rise. You don't want it really hot, but if you have a colder house like I do, light bulb on, light bulb on. So to your basic dough, before the first rise, there are two things that you can add. Don't add them together. 
Jim Leahy has suggested red wine vinegar, a couple drops, maybe up to a teaspoon. You could experiment, add some more flavor, and mmm, beer. This is an IPA, but the America's Test Kitchen people, who I really like, suggest a cheap lager, like a Budweiser. I don't have any, oh, I do have Budweiser downstairs. But anyway, um, this is our visual aid for beer. Couple tablespoons of beer. Subtract a little bit of water if you're going to add some beer, okay? Overnight, 12, 18, up to 24 hours. I've done all of those and I really can't tell a difference. If you have some uh, insight on this, please leave some comments because I learn from you guys a lot. But I usually set this up after dinner and then I bake the next morning and leaving the light on, I think that really helps. I thought that would make a better sound. These are heavy, but yeah, Eric is a fan of cast iron, right? Maybe too much of a fan of cast iron. And the original recipe is for either an enameled or a non-enameled Dutch oven, right? But if you don't have a Dutch oven, it's not the end of the world. So another tip, these work, casserole works just fine. Anything that's oven proof and is a sealed container, if you don't have this, maybe your mom has one. The other thing is the diameter of the cooking vessel, the baking vessel. Um, well, terracotta is another one, by the way. But this one is, which one is that? This is the bigger one, so it's gonna be a flatter loaf. This is the diameter's less, so it's gonna be a little taller loaf. I've been experimenting with that. Um, and yeah, it works, but the baking time changes a little. So try it and see what happens. That's the Garden Fork way, isn't it? Uh, you know, you watch these other baking shows and they have this kind of butcher block or a smooth surface. Uh, I've just found that this is not the greatest surface to put your dough on, it, it sticks. And my cutting boards are all cut up so the dough sticks to that too. So I use the back of a cookie sheet. Um, if you have a, like a half baking sheet or full baking sheet, um, that would be really handy too. So flour on this, dough on this. So look at that, look how that stringiness, how it kind of sticks to the top there. That is a good sign, how it's sticking up here and pulling. That's a sign that your dough is working really well. See how wet that is? That's okay. This is really wet, um, wetter than usual, so I'm just gonna add in a little bit here. So we're gonna do what's called a bench rest here. I'm gonna fold this over, fold this over, fold that over, and fold the back over like that. So fold, 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 fold. Top, bottom, side, side, okay? And then like that. And cover with the plastic wrap from the bowl. I'm getting dough, flour all over my camera. But um, it's okay, so we're gonna let, this feels really good. Um, 15 minute bench rest and we'll move forward from there. And then we take Nice, huh? So neat little texture thing. I like a little bit of cornmeal on the bottom. Now we're just gonna shape this and then drop it into here, okay? So I'm just gonna give this a couple of turns and I'm tucking under as I do that. Tuck under on this. It was beautiful. A little awkward because the camera operator is not here, so I have the tripod. But this is beautiful. So, some cornmeal on the bottom, and then this is a really key thing that I have learned, is I take this, and that goes, the smooth side goes face down in there. This is completely fine that these folds are in here. That's okay, not a problem, okay? towel, two hour rest. In a warm place again, um, that works for me. 
Again, if your house is cold, put it in the oven, turn the light on. Set your timer for an hour and a half, one hour and 30 minutes, because we have to preheat the oven, okay? So we're gonna heat up the Dutch oven, put the wire, the wire handle, facing out. Don't put anything here, don't rest anything here, okay? I like to take the lid off and put it to the side. And set this to 450. That's great. Got a nice rise on it. So let's get this ready to go in the preheated oven, okay? You know how you see these artisan loaves and they have these beautiful cuts in them. And I always thought you had to get the fancy bread knife with the razor blade thing and mm -mm. I can't remember who I learned this from. This works. So I just like to go, you could go a square, but let's try a square. This is kind of hard, but let me put this down. So we can go one, two, three, four. You want to do this for two reasons. One, yeah, it's decorative and it's, it's kind of cool and I call it the happy accident. But also, the dough needs to release steam as it's cooking and that cut allows that to do that. If not, the side of the loaf can blow out. You know, weird stuff, but that... So it's decorative and practical and that's a perfect world. Get the thickest pot holders you have. This is kind of fun, like puppet pot holder. Hi, Eric. Hi, how are you? I tried to be a ventriloquist when I was a kid. It didn't work. So now I make YouTube videos. So this opens up. Super hot. Close your oven up. And this is why I love the parchment. You know, the original recipe you to flop the dough in. This way, we just Gently place the dough in. Don't worry about the folds in the parchment. The parchment can pop out of the side. It's totally okay. And now it's time to go in the oven. <laughs> Again, this handle is gonna point toward the door. Thirty minutes. It's my princess Henry. There's my bread. Oh, that's beautiful. Take the lid off. That's beautiful. That is really cool. So the lid off baking is the last part and it depends on who you ask as to how long that should be and it depends on your oven as well. Um, I have a really small oven. I put the um, baking stone in there to keep the bottom of it from burning because the burner is right under here. If you have a convection oven, that's kind of the ideal oven. I'm gonna say 20 minutes, but we're gonna check and we wanna use a thermometer. 210 degrees internal temperature. Okay, um, I noticed in the kitchen, the smell has gone from baking bread to toasting bread. So, um, oh, let me turn on the light. Okay, that looks pretty nice. 205, 210, very nice. Did I show up at the right moment? You did. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Add the cream butter. I wish. Ooh, it's pretty. Nice crumb, right? This is a beautiful thing. And if you want to spend some more time with me, I've got some more no need bread videos. Oh, it's not just baking, it's Eric's world of DIY. <laughs> it should be floating right here, okay? 